Hi, my name is Lance. This is a video about the ice climbing technique. If you watched many other videos on how to climb ice, I bet they were all about the same. Feet should be at the same elevation, swing one tool after another, and so on. After years of teaching ice climbing, I noticed that as students advanced, they had a hard time breaking out of this pattern to learn more complex movements needed for steeper climbs and discontinuous features. In this video, I'm not going to present ice climbing as a piece of cake. I'm gonna teach you to bake the cake. My nickname that nobody knows is Gladys. And I'm Raleigh. And we're gonna make a cake with a lot of layers because in ice climbing, that is the most important thing. The approach I'm gonna present here might seem novel. However, it's not. It's the approach we take in any other medium of climbing where more complex movements are required. Ready? Okay, okay, okay. Yeah! Oh yeah! Oh, oh damn! <laughs> I'm not a guide, I'm a teacher. Let's learn how to climb. First, let's talk about a good swing. I like to compare the swing to throwing a dart, a movement that requires a light touch, precision, and a concerted effort to accelerate the projectile. There will be some movement in your shoulder, a little more in your elbow, but the majority of the work will be done with the movement of your wrist and fingers. So the first key point head should be up, your shoulders back. You need to create space between your shoulders and the eyes for good mechanics. Second key point, place the tool in front of you in the direction you want to move. Can you do it left-handed? Can I? I think I can. Oh. Remember. Yeah. Not as efficiently. You know, because if you if you had two tools, you would wanna you would wanna like use one and then progress a little ways. Uh-huh. And then come back with the other and sort of like leap them. It's like one Move your feet, and then the other. Very important. In rock climbing, it's not uncommon to have a hand placement that isn't positive enough to lean back on. However, with ice climbing, up to the point you're climbing thin, delicate ice, there's a huge gain in efficiency to lean back on the tools in order to move your feet freely and increase the leverage pushing your crampons into the ice via this cantilevering effect. So take the time, get a good tool in the best place. Rather than just say move your feet up, let's get specific. Movements can range from moving your whole leg using your hip and knee joints to finer movements of just the ankle joint. Dorsiflexion is the ankle movement that orients the crampon points upwards to make contact with the ice. Eversion and inversion are more common in snow climbing movements, but they're useful here too. Hip adduction and abduction allow wide swinging movements from side to side with our feet and stepping through. Rotation from the hip is how we change the orientation of the front points and point our knee in or out. In addition to the movement of our legs, we can position our entire body to further aid the movement of our feet. There we go. So now I need to get higher. Do you need to be higher? I do need to be higher. You, would, you, would like some steps up be helpful? That would be tremendously helpful. Okay, yeah, here I got a little step stool for you. Okay. Um, you know, when you step up on something, it, it, rather than being far away like that, Huh? It actually kind of helps if you get closer to it so you can kind of balance oh. your weight over that, yeah. So like here? Yeah, yeah, and then you just, yeah, look at that. Oh, that's perfect. How would you step up on a box? You want to get your prime movers under your mass. Quick flashback to layer one. Leaning back on your tool helps with moving your feet tremendously. For one, you can see the features of the ice and make the best decision about how to use them. But the biggest benefit of leaning back is that cantilevering effect that keeps your feet glued to the ice as you move. You might notice I'm hardly kicking the ice at all. A sharp, precise jab is what we're going for. Okay, we need to understand the techniques at your disposal to adjust or place your center of gravity. The most coarse adjustment is moving your hips toward away from the ice, which is the sagittal plane, or side to side, which is the frontal plane. Hip rotation comes into use when you need to get your knee out of the way to allow your hips to move inward. This movement in steeper terrain can allow you to pull your mask into the ice with your heel spikes. When those layers come out, what you're gonna get, like some of them have bulges and, and you wanna be careful with those bulges. <laughs> use gravity to the advantage to hold that like, whole like cake together. center it up. Totally center. center. Okay, all right. Okay, that's good to know, good to know. Would it be fair to say that it is important to to stack them intelligently. Very intelligently. When we say intelligent, what we're really talking about is comfortable and in equilibrium. 
The stance you're aiming for should allow you to relax. So what you see is, you see how fluid and complete your movements were? And as soon as you're fighting to stay in balance, how much more contracted your arm movements are, you feel yeah. the difference. This can be an iterative process. If you stand up and don't feel like you're in equilibrium, step back down and try a different combination of foot placements. Last bit on this layer. How do features fit into this? Let's consider two examples. The first is the case where one foot is on a really good ledge. Naturally, you would put most of the weight on the really good foot. The second foot transitions to a role of simply helping stabilize the stance. The second case is stemming. If you're on less than vertical terrain, you can basically stem anywhere. However, there's usually features you can take advantage of. Corner systems, grooves, little mushrooms that form can really open up opportunities for us to stem with our legs and take the weight off of our hands. Okay, here's the big one. Rotation is huge. We got a lot of layers to this cake. Four of them to be precise. Rotation is the most effective and precise tool we have to position our center of gravity. It's not clear to me why rotation is thought of as an advanced skill in ice climbing. It's one of the most basic movements in climbing. It's an art, it's not exactly a science. <laughs> That's some nice rotation. Tons of value in rotation. Rotation allows you to change the direction you're pushing or pulling with your crampons, especially in more complex terrain. Rotating our torso and bringing the forearm to the chest into a lock-off position has massive benefits as the climbing gets steeper and we're forced to use the tool more for a base of support. Rotation allows the forward arm to swing at placements much further away. Combining rotation of our torso and hips with adduction and rotation within the hip joint, we can get our center of gravity directly under a tool. With our weight under the tool pulling down versus having to pull out on the tool, we can get a lot more out of tenuous placements in steeper terrain. The only geometric shape you'll hear me talk about is the gold star you get for placing a good tool where you want to go, moving your feet efficiently with proper body positioning, and placing your center of gravity intelligently. Now go on, go bake those cakes. All right, ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the Gladys and Raleigh Baking Show. We had a brief intermission there because we're fucking amateurs. Uh, Raleigh, I got a question. We ain't got a mixer. It's all right, we just need the right tool. The right tool. Like this. Okay. <laughs> See, right tool for the job. And while the cakes are in the oven, we really want to thank our live studio audience for coming out today and being such an integral part of the show. Right. Thanks, Pete. Oh. Right. <laughs> Definitely not going to be a prize under that guy's chair. We've got our four layers. We've got them cooked. They have been stabbed with a nut tool because it is the most useful tool. Hey, studio audience, go sit the f down. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Check, check, baby, check. Check, check, baby, check, check. Audio, Checking check. Audio. Check. <laughs> All right. <laughs>